What's up, guys? This is Alex from X-Trades back to you with another weekly trade ideas list. Hope everybody had a wonderful trading week. So this week, we do have four setups to go over. Last week, we only had three. Uh, two of them are pretty good. So if you call Alcoa and Shop, Shopify, they did pretty good for a couple days. I think AA maybe got like three or four percent to the upside starting, you know, from Monday. And then Shop did get like almost like a 10 percent bounce. It actually capped up super heavy and then filled the gap back downward. So um, it did sell back off. So you kind of had to be quick with both of them, but either way, I feel like they, you know, they worked out pretty good. Exom kind of stayed in the range, didn't really get the drop I was looking for yet, but hopefully this week, you know, we'll have some good setups this week as well. But before we get into those, so we're gonna get into the economic calendar here, like we usually do. So this week, is data's kind of quiet this week. There's really nothing important until Thursday and Friday. You can see that we have existing home sales here. So this is probably the most important for Thursday. It's gonna give you know, a little hint into how real estate is doing. And there's a bunch of Fed speakers, but I mean, it's kind of debatable if these are really gonna affect the market or not. I would say Fed Waller probably has the, probably the most influence to move the market depending you know, if he's saying that he's going to favor, you know, another 0.25 basis point hike or on the trail for going for a pause or, you know, to kind of give insight into what the Fed is thinking on the interior. And you can see the Fed Loretta Mester is also speaking. And then there's a, looks like there's a listen in with Lori Logan and then Michelle Bowman. And then R Raphael Bostic is at five, but that's not till after close. So you won't see any headlines or anything until, you know, after the market closes. And that's for Thursday. And then Friday, I'd say this is the most important data. We do have the U.S. services PMI and then also manufacturing PMI as well. So that's probably the big day and as well as the existing home sales. So but other than the data, you know, it's kind of quiet on that front. We do have a lot of earnings this week. So you can see Charles Schwab is, you know, Monday. So that's going to be before the open. A couple more banks, you know, State Street. And then after close, you can see we got J.B. Hunt, uh, First Bank and a couple others. Tuesday, we got Bank of America, Johnson Johnson, Goldman Sachs, Lockheed Martin, Netflix is probably the big one for tech. Uh, United Airlines, I mean, there's just a bunch for Tuesday. And then Wednesday, you can see we have ASML, we got Morgan Stanley, US Bancorp, we got IBM, Tesla, Tesla is probably the biggest one, uh, Discover, Baker Hughes, we got Ali Invest. And then Thursday, we have, looks like we got Taiwan Semiconductors and then American Express, AT&T, Rite Aid. So looks like it's pretty action packed for earnings. It's not really the big tech giants yet. You got Procter & Gamble here Friday. Lots of pretty well-known names here across the board. So this should be an interesting week, especially with the uh, Friday, the banks did pretty good. JP Morgan, Wells Fargo, and Citibank also reported they had pretty good numbers. So they kind of, I feel like they kind of held up the market Friday, even though we were red a little bit, but we did end up coming up towards the end of the day uh, from the bottom into close. So the banks did pretty good. So I would expect maybe Monday, these banks, you know, depending on their balance sheet and if they're, you know, holding any big unrealized losses or anything that can hint at another banking crisis, I feel like the banks are pretty stable right now. Or as, you know, the treasury and everybody else in the world would say, sound and resilient, quote, unquote. But yeah, so that's for the earnings. But let's go ahead and get into the setups. So setup number one, we're looking at CHPT here. This is charge point holding. This is a counter trim reversal play I'm looking at. So you are kind of getting this off the bottom. So it makes it a little bit riskier. You can see it's kind of downtrending, but we are pulling into major support. If we zoomed out here, you can see we got a major support at 850. We also have a major support at 807. So this 850 to 807 zone is kind of a pretty strong support area, probably could act as sort of like a demand zone for buyers. So I'm hoping we can see a curl up about here. And then ideally I'd probably be looking for the first, you know, probably the highest I can put is at the 50 EMA. You can see it's been trending off of it. So you got a rejection here, we got a rejection here, got another rejection here. So it's probably as high as I can put us for right now. If we zoom in a little bit to like the hourlies or you know the shorter time frames, we do have a major resistance here at 962. So that could be an area that you watch as well. That 962 area looks like it had a pretty strong rejection rejection zone. So just something to keep an eye on. But otherwise, I mean zooming out, you can see, I mean, this is starting to come towards, you know. A pretty well-known bottom there where it's bounced a couple of times so i feel like this is worth noting and if other high growth names 
and catch a bid i feel like this can be a pretty good name to squeeze i feel like maybe two it would need to reclaim this little previous support here at 896 if it can get over 896 i feel like that'll take it straight up to that 962 and the daily 50 ema so i'm looking at calls in this we're looking for upside one thing i am noticing you can see the macd arrow this is a signal that it crossed over this was probably was that march 27th it has held the positive signal since then but just in case if it does in fact start crossing back over and you know the momentum starting to shift to the downside that maybe be you know a little signal that maybe this support is not going to hold but I mean, the MACD is kind of a lagging indicator. So if you want a more like real time one with crossovers, the KDJ might be your best bet. It kind of gives more accurate, even though sometimes you'll get false signals and stuff, it's a little bit earlier on the crossovers. So you can see the MACD is held a buy with the KDJ here did cross over a couple days ago, indicating this downward momentum. So, I mean, it did give a good signal on that. So maybe if we can get the KDJ here, the oscillator to start curling back up, as well as the MACD holding, that's a good signal as well. But just keep an eye on that MACD. If it does go back down and cross over, just be wary of that. And also watch the 807 support. If it gets under that, that would be obviously your stop loss or your risk off zone. CHPT looking at calls next we're going to lift so i actually posted this one in the chat earlier because i thought it was interesting i wasn't sure if it was going to make my list because it was this is you know i go through like 250 tickers or so and this was you know maybe like probably like the first of 10 or something that i was looking at so it's still early and i wasn't sure if i was going to add it to my list but i really didn't find anything else other than these four that i truly like so lift i, I added to the list it looks good here you can see that's you know breaking out of this downtrend it actually came back and back tested and now you can see this daily candle starting to push upward you do have this green arrow indicating the macd is starting to cross back up to the upside even though it's kind of messy up here um it is starting to curl back up so this red arrow that, that was curling a signal down now this signal is starting to curl back up so you know it's kind of had a back and forth but now that it's getting this macd buy signal and it's confirmed after the close as long as we can get over this 1053 level i feel like it could get up to that you know that gap resistance right there so we need to get over make a base head up into gap resistance and that gap resistance is probably going to be about right here at 1157 it's probably as high as i could put us until i see us get over that gap resistance if it gets over the gap resistance obviously it could fill but that's probably not even going to happen until earnings so you see this earnings is you know coming up pretty soon so obviously you know you're going to get out before then as well as you know not gamble through earnings just because this is a pretty volatile name and the economy is kind of you know in the shitter right now lyft is kind of an unknown and obviously i'm pretty sure it's still an unprofitable company so anything high growth with high interest rates and you know this economy is kind of you know it's considered like a high beta name so you just have to be careful with the high growth names just because you know they're not pulling any profits there's really nothing other than kind of like news and momentum that actually moves these things it's not like you know investors are you know getting confidence you know from their profits to hold this they're kind of buying into the dream that eventually this company will be profitable and Lyft and Uber have pretty much been unprofitable for a pretty long time I believe so just have to be careful with those high growth names but yeah like I said just get over this 1053 if you can get over that 1053 they could take you up to you know to this gap resistance you know with the 1150s so I'm looking at calls on this obviously your you know your ID is going to go invalid if it goes back under the downtrend line if it goes back under the downtrend line you can assume that's probably just going to keep following and another thing that's kind of in confluence with this to get over that 1053 is also the 50 EMA you can see this 50 EMA here trending down we need to get over that in order to get up to the 1150s so if you want to use that 11 or that 1053 zone as a you know like a confirmation level you can add an alert wait for that to hit before entering and that pretty much be a resistance breakout and then that's your free space up to the gap resistance so lift here looking at calls next we're going into PayPal so a little big tech name you can see it's breaking out of this really consolidated wedge also just finally getting over this daily 50 ema you can see that the last few times it got over it just kind of struggled wasn't able to hold this signal looks a little bit better this candle looks more full you got a pretty you got a higher close above the 50 ema than these other candles so that could be given a signal as well as this little breakout of the wedge you could even go down to the four hour and it looks pretty good there as well it's a nice you know kind of like a symmetrical wedge i wouldn't classify it as a falling wedge because it's not really you know pointing downward it's more of a symmetrical wedge which are bilateral so i mean depending if it breaks to the upside it's bullish but a, a symmetrical wedge can also break to the downside if it breaks the lower trend line so that's the difference between 
you know, a falling wedge, which is predominantly bullish versus a symmetrical wedge is bilateral. So it can go either way. But now you can see we do have the, you know, confirmed upside. But ideally, I'd be looking for a move up into supply. If we can get up into supply, that's probably going to put you at about 79.60 or so. The exact would be 79.37. And that supplies from this last earnings zone. So this whole area is kind of like a high volume area where there's probably a lot of unloading, maybe even brought in some new demand and just high activity area. So I'm guessing this will act as resistance as it did act right here. You can see it rejected there pretty well. That's probably as high as I could put it. If we go down, like I said, you go down to the hourly, so you do have a couple areas you could look out for. Like you got a short term resistance here at 77.11. If you can get over that 77.11, you do have free space up to that supply zone. So just watch that area, maybe zoom out a little bit and you can see the short term levels and you'll know not to, you know, maybe take a day trade right at the 79.11, you know, cause it could reject, you could wait for it to get over, make a base, you know, make support and then you can get in. So sometimes you just have to zoom out, especially with these kind of like choppy setups. You can see it's kind of just been in a range just now breaking out so i'd like to see a little bit more volume on this as well showing you know more buyers are stepping in but otherwise it looks good on technical wise and you know it is pretty cheap right now i mean it's you know still trading at 52 week lows sort of i mean this is a 52 week low area right here 71 17 to 67 58 and you know after a dump this hard i mean this is a pretty good discount for paypal considering how long they've been around and they were kind of like a pandemic sweetheart play. So obviously all of those kind of names did lose a lot of juice when the Fed, you know, began raising interest rates. Like I was just saying about Lyft, the high growth names, the tech names, you know, when it comes more expensive to borrow money, they have to start laying people off. It's more expensive to hire, etc. So it all just plays a role in kind of the sell off. But yeah, either way, I mean, it's breaking out of the short term wedge. Looks good for a short term play. Just get over that, you know, 77.11. That's a nice little free space up to that supply. So PayPal looking at calls here. Obviously, your stop loss, you know, if it probably if it goes under this like 71.17, I would probably stop looking at calls. But otherwise, this whole area is you know still holding up if you really want to be conservative obviously a stop loss could just be under friday's low and that'd be under you know 75 17. you know this could take a couple days to play out given this choppy area so just be wary of that next we're going into gld so this is a purely a gold play and you can see gold has just been having a killer run up but now it's hitting this major major supply so this is a supply from when we topped out back in march 2022 you can see it created this huge rally based drop candle so after this rally based drop candle got produced it hasn't been tested since but now that we're coming up to it you can see it's kind of struggling at this area so we can zoom in now that i've showed you the supply zone it's kind of a wide setup you know the supply is kind of was kind of far away it's kind of old so i had to zoom out a little bit but now you can see the reaction to it it's just spot on you can see it's kind of trying to double top here as well there is a previous resistance it looks like at 186.10 you can see it comes from this little area over here that could act as support it also acted the short-term resistance right here we're dumped a little bit but either way i mean you are starting to get that double top formation as well as the macd is crossing to the downside you can see you know you do have the red arrow indicating that the crossover signal already happened and right after that signal came through it did have a couple days sell off came back up and now after i'm pretty sure the dollar spiked really hard on friday that did bring gold down i'm sure it brought other metals down as well the dollar and you know metals kind of inverse each other so in a way this is kind of like a you know a bullish at the market play because gold is kind of like a safety hedge as well as you know like bonds and you know other metals it kind of you know flight to safety now that you know it's starting to look a little more risk on in the market people are maybe starting to get a little wary of gold and you are seeing that resistance that supply so i am looking at puts on this this would probably be a swing trade gold is a very tight market so obviously it's not the best to day trade or anything unless you get you know decent volatility like this is been a pretty good you know day trading you know range you got Y candles up two percent almost here up 2.91 percent here got up two percent here and then a down 1.77 percent uh from friday so i mean the range has been pretty good if you're day trading it but either way usually gold is a pretty tight market so you know this may need time to play out so ideally if you did look at a swing trade on this your price target probably be like this one 8170s max and that comes from this resistance right here that could act as support but otherwise i mean day trades you might have to be patient with gold it just depends you know it depends how you know the dollar's moving how currencies are moving how the market's doing 
and that kind of will you know depend on the volatility so yeah i mean just give it time maybe you know look at 30 to 60 days of expiration out give it time and maybe it can come down to this 181.73 and this in a way is kind of a, a a bullish bet on the market since you know gold's kind of that safety play so looking at puts on gold like i said just buy time maybe or be patient with day trades because it's usually a tight market next we're going into the spy so last week we were focused on this 40 what is that 411.92 we needed to see that 411.92 get taken out in order to get up to supply i said if it got over that it'd be able to get up to supply i did that uh it's probably you know like a three dollar move or so so it's decent it wasn't like a huge move or anything which is why i was wary trading this range just because it's so tight and as soon as it broke over that it's basically going straight into supply but i mean it did give a pretty good trade if you're day trading you know from that 411.92 breakout straight into supply you can see the rally base drop supply and it rejected perfectly and that's due to this supply right here so this week we will need to see this 411.92 to 407.45 this whole area just needs to hold to hold the you know bullish structure and as well you just need to be careful with calls because we are at supply so me personally i'm not looking at upside you know i'm not looking for a big upside or anything until it gets over that 418.31 and you need to make a base in order to go higher you know just that break retest and then go higher just kind of your standard break and retest so i would need to see that otherwise i'm looking at this as kind of like a danger zone if you're long just for the s p which i mean in a way reflects the whole market but i mean not everything's just going to follow to the t so you just have to be careful with spy here just because you know we're at the supply i mean we're barely just over the 411.92 as well so as long as that's holding and as long as this 407.45 which comes from this previous resistance and you can see it acted as a base here i feel like you know overall bull structure is fine and you know it can keep going higher ideally for it to go lower it would need to break that 407.45 get back within the previous resistance and sell imbalance area if it gets back within there you can see that demand at 404 and that'd probably be an ideal to you know start looking at longs or you know buying the dip if it gets down into this demand zone and that's a rally you know base rally zone so decent rbr zone if you wanted to buy the dip wait for it cheaper obviously your you know zone of look to buy is you know 4745 if that can't hold up you need to wait for that for you know the 404 area so that's for the spy be careful of supply here maybe you can even look at puts about 30 to 60 days out give it some time let it work at the supply zone and then obviously your risk off you know for dumping your puts and taking the loss would be if you know if it broke out of the four you know the 41831 which is the you know the supply zone high so yeah i mean it looks decent actually for bears here assuming that the vix can get better signals the vix is very low so volatility is very low the, the week kind of felt a little slow as well so you do have to be careful like i said buy time that will give you time to work through the low volatility give it time to work in the supply zone maybe make a nice rejection candle or something confirming that it's reacting more to supply because this is just one candle so you do have to be careful of that but otherwise i mean like i said just be careful if you really want to wait to be a bull and trade the breakout you could do that or you could wait for it to get down to 407.45 look for support there or look for support if it dips down in this demand zone so that 407.45 as well as the 404 areas you know good areas to look for support to be made if it decided to go lower and that you know you could go ahead and still buy into the structure and it's still in a bullish structure and you'd know it'd be in a bullish structure if it got into that area as well as this demand zone. Next, we're going into the QQQ. So just a total chop week. You can see Monday here, all the way to Friday. It's these five candles, just pretty much a nothing burger. Last week, I said our 13, our 313.68 to 321.51 was our tradable range. And you can see exactly why. I mean, it went nowhere. I don't even think it reached the you know the 321.51 to the exact T, but it did get up to the 320 area. So, I mean, the general areas, still the same so i have the same outlook you can wait for it to get down to the 313.68 and keep buying off that keep day trading off that zone and then you know trade up to you know around the 320s and that's your tradable range i got the same outlook except this week now we do have a negative macd crossover you can see that we do have this red arrow and that's indicating if we zoom out the macd is starting to cross down and that's the first signal since it crossed over March 14th. So it's been about a been in a buy signal for about a month, which is good for bulls. Now maybe the momentum is starting to slow down a little bit. Remove these arrows. If you guys didn't know, that 31368 just comes from this, you know, this peak right here. And you can see it's you know just a classic break retest and maybe able to go higher. But obviously you do need to take out this 321.51 
in order to go higher. The 321.51 comes from over here. If you didn't tune in last week, that's where we got our resistance from, just this little area right here from August 2022. So we'll need to take out that in order to go higher. So your tradable range is still the same as last week in our video, the 321.51 to 313.68. And I'll repeat it one more time if you want to wait for the 313s to get tested or, you know, the 314s or so, you can look for dip buys off that. If it does in fact break that, I'll say the same thing I said last week, wait for it to get down to that demand of 308 and then it could curl up about there. And that's that rally base rally zone right here. So it's a rally, increase the base higher low to a you know higher high breakout. Just focus on that 313.68 to 321.51. If that breaks, wait for the 308s. Next, we're going into IWM. I'm trying to remember what we were looking at last week on this. I know we were focused on this 179.26 resistance. I felt like that was probably about as high as I could put us as usual, just because it's rejected twice already. And you can see it got another rejection at the third time. But now you can see it's actually testing this uptrend line for the third time. It's a short term uptrend line, but you know, it did test it and kind of wick off of it. So if we zoom down to the four hour here, you can see it's holding up pretty good. You got test one, test two, test three. So maybe we can see it move right back up to the same 179.26. If that does indeed flush here, this IWM trend line would be a good quick, you know, put trade. So I'm going to go ahead and actually set an alert on that because I think that's interesting and I want to be capitalized on that if it does break. I still feel like this could be a decent setup. So I went ahead and set an alert on this uptrend line. If that wants to break, you can flush down to, you know, the 172.60s. But otherwise, I mean, this is holding up a third test. So ideally, I mean, just look for that 179.26 to get tested again. That will need to break in order to go higher. The only thing I don't like about that is that if it does break out of that, you can see it goes straight into this downtrend line. So if it goes straight into that downtrend line, which has been pretty notorious, you will have to be careful for that. If you want to wait for it to break out of the downtrend line, wait for it to back test and go higher, obviously that can take you up, you know, the 185s, but it will need to get out of that big downtrend line as well as, you know, if we go to the daily time frame, it would need to get over these moving averages as well. So you can see we got the 50 EMA here that's acting as resistance. So it's still trending below and as well as the 200 SMA. So you got price trading under both of those. So ideally, I mean, you will need to see those get broken. And as well, you can assume this is still on a downtrend just because it's trading under those moving averages. The good thing about it though, MACD gave a signal here. It's still holding a decent buy signal. You can see it's crossed to the upside. You got the um, you got the histogram is still green. So I mean, momentum has been pointing up a little bit as well as it's holding this 170.34 and 168.19. So it's been holding that. I think last week I said you'd wanted to wait until it got to the 170s or so. It, would, it didn't even get that low. So it actually bounced at 172s. But the maximum I can put us is that 179.26. And I mean, you can see exactly why. It's just kind of a chop area. Every time we get up there, it rejects. So yeah, just watch this trend line. I also set that alert. So we'll wait for that to break maybe. And that'll give a good put trade. Otherwise, bulls are going to be waiting for this breakout and waiting for that 179.26 to get over as well as the moving averages. So nothing really of importance on this. You're just kind of waiting. I personally, just because it's you know trading under the moving averages and still downtrending, I feel like once this uptrend line, the short term uptrend line breaks, that'll be a good put trade back down to the 172s. Next, we're going to the VIX. So I don't know if you guys have tuned in with my other videos, but we were focused on this 1811 and looking for it to either break or bounce there. You can see once it got that daily close right here on Thursday under the 1811, it went down to that 1706, just like I thought it would. So I said if this 1811 broke, that's a straight shot down to 1706, and that'd be pretty bullish for the market. It was able to do that, and it actually closed at 1707. Pretty crazy, and maybe it's the market maker screwing with us, but we do need to see the 176 get broke. So if that 1706 does get a daily close under, it will take you to 1634 next. So we can zoom out here. That 1634 comes from this base right here. So you can see this, this little low here from January 2022. That's the 1634 you see highlighted here. This 1473 comes from this low. So if that 1634 broke then, we would go down to the 14s. And that's just, I mean, stupid low volatility. So the VIX is at the lowest it's been for a while, which has made the market feel a little bit slow. But we are melting up slowly but surely. But this is also an area you just want to be careful because, you know, the VIX did start curling up every time we got here. 
in the past for 2022 but now that the rate hikes are you know could be ending their cycle and the fed is kind of you know starting to shift a little bit you know we could start you know seeing the vix come down even more because people are optimistic there's not enough fear in the market there's no surprise factor so you need the surprise factor you need something to break or you need you know surprising data I guess on Friday is kind of, you know, surprising that of the consumer inflation expectations that kind of had a little surprise in it. It looked like, you know, people are expecting a little bit more inflation going forward. And that's probably due to the uprising, you know, gas prices recently. So a lot of people, you know, regular consumers are, you know, kind of gauging their inflation based off what they buy every day. That's going to be like gas, food, services, etc. So that kind of surprised us, actually. If we, I'll show you real quick. So the inflation expectations data came out right here at supply and then look we just instantly dumped i mean it was like almost like point point seven percent so almost a whole percentile to the downside just you know in two candles off that and i think it's just because it surprised the market people weren't expecting you know it to come out like that but i mean eventually it did kind of just bottom out and you know rip to the upside i figured it would just volatility is so low you know it's just so hard to catch downside right now if you didn't want to catch downside friday you would have to get rid of supply and as well as you know at the r3 level which it rejected perfectly and i'm so mad that i missed this on friday just because it was so good i mean it was a perfect r3 to s3 rejection if you follow camera pivots or follow the camera pivot strategy that i talk about all the time great setup so yeah that was for friday it's really interesting that the you know inflation expectations came back up a little bit but what i was saying about the vix here we do need more of a surprise factor like i was saying you need more of a surprise factor you need something to break in order to see volatility come back up when the unexpected comes out the vix starts going up because uh, people are buying at more SPX puts and, you know, the SPX options are going crazy and that in turn does start bidding up the VIX. So we do need to see more of that surprise factor. If I do want to see a bounce here, I'm going to need to see a nice daily candle closing, you know, looking bullish, looking full. You can see none of these candles look bullish or full. I mean, this one green candle here at a little... You know spike but then you know close with a big large shadow wick kind of a little move right here but i mean the bullish candles have just been total crap i mean you can see I mean, it's just been trending lower ever since it got under the you know the daily 200 sma again or since it got under the 50 ema again maybe even tapped you know the 2022 to 2023 average close back here when i got up here so yeah we will need to see more of that i don't have the actual number for the 2022 to 2023 average close i actually forgot to mark it so sorry about that but Either way, it's still going to say it's going to be the same, pretty much in the same general area. It might have gone from like 2463 to like, you know, 2454 or something like that. So still the same gist. Either way, I feel like eventually it is going to come up for a mean regression and it's going to tap that average and then maybe try to reject about there. But we will need that surprise factor, like I said. But yeah, just focus on that 1706. If it can make a base there, obviously it can go higher. But otherwise, if that breaks, you got 1634 and then that 14s. Uh, 1473 below like i showed you earlier next we're going into the dxy so this support just did not want to give up this week so it's pretty much the same outlook as last week this could be a double bottom essentially you know the vix as well trying to you know kind of try to find its bottom maybe this is a little bit different because you can see the dxy is actually giving some candles and some bullish candles reacting to support vix has kind of just been selling off straight so this could be a more of a better hint of you know maybe the market coming lower it just depends but you can see the 10129s which comes from this same level we focused on for weeks probably even months i mean every time we cover the I cover this video weekly, you know, this 101.29 is, you know, the same area. So, and you can see, I mean, dollar volatility has kind of calmed down a little bit. So other than that 101.29 level from, you know, back from over there, we do have this 52 week low at 182 as well. You can see, I mean, it just held up to the penny. So that will need to break in order to see the dollar go lower. And that would maybe give a better signal for stocks. But as long as this keeps holding up, I feel like this could shoot back up to, you know, the one, you know, the one Oh threes or so. And the one Oh threes is probably my most looked at just because it's the COVID peak. So this is from 2020 when the dollar peaked out, that's pretty much the tradable range. So anything between one Oh one 29 to one Oh three is kind of a tradable range. So if this one Oh one 29 is holding as well as, you know, the one hundred eighties, I will assume that you know it could bounce up to 103s and that's how i you know derive that number but other than that i mean there's kind of like a little downtrend going right it will need to break out of that in order to you know see more upside so you know if it's able to break out back test you know maybe then it could get up to 103s but 
Either way, it's still holding the support as well as it's downtrending. So we will need to see a little bit more of a signal. That breakout signal could be perfect. You know, that could be a bearish signal for the market as well as take gold lower. So we will need to see that, but you can see the dollar's kind of marching up here. So maybe there's a little bit of currency volatility Sunday night. It's not too bad, but 0.23 is really not that bad. I feel like a worry zone for DXY intraday is probably like half a percent. You know, 0.75, that's when people start getting worried. And as well as, you know, when it's down half a percent or down 0.75 to 1%, that's pretty bullish for the market. So I feel like the inverse correlation actually got a little bit better recently. So for a while, dollar and stocks were selling off together and bouncing together just for a couple of days, maybe a week. Now they're starting to get that inverse factor back. So that's good. I've noticed that on an intraday basis, at least, because I'm looking at the dollar and stocks, you know, as the day goes, as each day goes. So but either way, I mean, you know, dollar still holding its inverse correlation long term. But, you know, there was a couple of days to where they were selling off and bouncing together, which kind of worried people kind of given that, you know, recessionary theme. So, yeah, that's the video, guys. Just watch this 182 to 10129. Make sure that holds. Wait for the breakout. And that'd be a good bearish signal. Maybe to go lower and maybe that's saying go lower as well. I hope you guys enjoyed. I'm going to get this chopped up, edited. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe to our X-Trades YouTube channel. And I'm out. Love you guys.